his strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lord have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, now and ever. Amen. The epistle which is appointed for today is from the 13th chapter of Romans, beginning with the 8th verse. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, they shall not cover. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill will to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, nor in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Here ended the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 21st chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. When they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against us, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the fowl of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on him their clothes, and they sat him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and straw them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and of the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. The Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the 
Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was inclined by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. It was crucified all set for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitting on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again in glory to judge those who faith in the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and Apostolic Church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today's Gospel reading recalls the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. With the benefit of historical perspective, we know today that this was the beginning of the most active part of Jesus' ministry. The people at the time, however, had blinded themselves to what was happening and to its significance. Even though we think we know the whole story, let's look at what happened from the perspective of those that were there. Prior to his return to Jerusalem, Jesus had been ministering throughout Judea. We have heard accounts of Jesus in various parts, along the lake, the mount, in towns, and villages. Many viewed him as the much-heralded Messiah, a strong leader who would throw off the Roman yoke and bring new power and independence to the people of Israel. Frustratingly for some, he had not called for the people to take up arms, prepare, train, and follow him to push the hated Roman oppressors out of their land. Nor had Jesus publicly affirmed to all that he was indeed the Messiah. Many who had previously supported him withdrew that support as it appeared his efforts to overthrow the Romans were only going to result in a vicious Roman reprisal and decimation of the Jewish people. Still, Jesus had some supporters, mostly from Galilee. How many other Jews saw him as the Messiah is unknown, but for many he was a false Messiah. To strengthen his claim, Jesus carried through several actions that had been foretold. First, he no longer restrained his followers from proclaiming that he was the son of David, the Messiah. Previously, he had quieted them from making such claims. It was, it was not politically the time to do that. Now, as he prepared to enter a Jerusalem already turned hostile by the Pharisees, Jesus felt he had nothing to politically lose by allowing his followers to openly proclaim that he was the Messiah. His change of direction, his seemingly emboldened public announcement that indeed he was the Messiah, drew back those support that had turned away for his seemingly timid campaign to win back Israel. The recent raising of Lazarus had made an impact on the city of Jerusalem. The city was certainly abuzz with it. Likely, everyone knew about his latest and very public miracle. Certainly, it would have fired up enthusiasm for Jesus' claim. But the populace would ascribe further intentions of Jesus to throw out the Romans would be quickly, and their minds disappointingly, evident. To fulfill prophecy, an ass and a cult of an ass were called for. The apostles were told to fetch them from a nearby home. That the man readily gave up his animals is evidence that he may have been a disciple. They placed their garments upon the animals to decorate them for the occasion we might presume. And Jesus then rolled the, rode the colt. This may have been the first time the colt had been ridden, thus making the occasion even more special. This walk fulfilled Zechariah's prophecy and was an open claim to the Messiahship. This selection to ride upon an ass 
And that, of course, is noteworthy. To have ridden upon a proud horse would have been a warlike entry. To have ridden upon the humble ass was to make an entry of peace. The Jews recognized the significance of Jesus' action as an important claim on the kingship and that of the Messiah. People spread their garments on the ground for Jesus' party to walk on. This was an extremely deep and profound way to greet an ultimately important guest. Mention of this was made as far back as the second book of Kings. The people went out of the city to greet Jesus, shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Hosanna appears in the 118th Psalm, where it is addressed to God. There, it has the meaning of save us now. Perhaps a more significant meaning than the spiritually charged way of saying array, it came to take on during Jesus' day. Perhaps that is why St. Luke cho chose to phrase it as glory in the highest. Jesus goes into the temple to reset the practices there, when, with the money changers, the worship there, and the priests. The book of Malachi speaks of the Messiah having the authority to do such things. Here in Matthew's Gospel, we read of Jesus finding the money changers set up in the outer temple. It had been decreed that the temple fees or animal sacrifices had to be paid in native currency. The money changers there were there to exchange foreign monies for good Jewish shekels. Jesus' issue was not necessarily the requirement for things to be paid in shekels, but the incredibly horrendous exchange rate. The temple staff colluded with the money changers, and they built as much money out of the worshippers as possible. It was this duplicious act that so enraged Jesus that he tore through the outer temple, upsetting the order misguidedly set by the temple staff. Certainly, this temple cleansing would reverberate through the city as the rituals and procedures of the temple leaders was not only being questioned, but literally overturned. Jesus could not have done more to attract attention to himself and demand that the Jewish authorities act and act swiftly. The Jewish religious body, the Sanhedrin, was to judge between true and false prophets and punish those found to be false. And, as we already know, their actions were very soon in coming. Why did Jesus do these things? Well, he knew he had to set events in motion that would both assert as actually being the Messiah, but also bring out his own surrender to God's will and fulfillment of God's merciful plan for mankind. This active period of Jesus' ministry culminated with his death upon the cross. His death and the actions he made, the words he spoke, had a profound impact upon the apostles, the disciples, and all Christians down to us today. It is evident that Jesus came to Jerusalem knowing what was going to happen to him. He not only embraced it, he made sure that it was going to happen. Jesus knew. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
sacrifice is offered the praise and glory of God, and with special intention for the recovery of those in this parish who are sick. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our oblations, and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire thee continually in the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity in God in love. We beseech thee also to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, and especially Donald, our president, and Lawrence, our governor, that they, that they may truly and impartially administer justice for the punishment of wickedness and vice, and for the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant John, our bishop, that they may, but by their love and doctrine, show forth thy true and lively birth, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sick, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those who we now mention in the secrecy of our hearts. And we bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace and one of them for example, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye mm -hmm. that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking us justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do truly earnestly repent, and are humbly sorry for these now misdemeanors. The remembrance of them is grievous on us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all of this past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, for the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins unto all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ hath unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, 
If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Be with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is we who are so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, because thou didst send thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life. That when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may bear, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these, thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. We, the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he prayed. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Lord, I love to do that just now. Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body in 
Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Happy are they who are called to his supper. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, bless thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. As our Saviour Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching that it granted by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy holy church may obtain remission of our sins, and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. For Lord, though we be unworthy for our manifold sins, who are found to be heavenly sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us stand and say the glory of the next justice. Glory be in God on high, and on earth peace was will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God and Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, 
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, support us all the day long, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then in thy mercy grant us a safe lodging, and a holy rest, and peace at the last.